It's rough to realize your kid knows how fragile you are. Paul, do not do that. Yes. Now he's so strong. I'm not fragile. Hey, man. Chase, how are you, sir? I'm doing great. How about you? I'm doing fantastic. Look, I can't wait for everyone to see Shrinking Season 2 starting on October 16th. The show is absolutely incredible. Wow. This explores the consequences of Jimmy's unorthodox therapy. Um, the last look, last season, we started it off with the, or last, the end of last season with Grace, get, Grace getting pushed off of the cliff by uh, Donnie was quite the shock. How will the events uh, of that uh, shape season two going forward? Yeah, well, we wanted to be honest about that there are consequences to trying this unorthodox therapy, and we didn't want everything to just go well. Some things went well, other things went um, really horribly, like the Grace situation. And so, uh, yeah, we pick up right where we left off of um, dealing with the consequences of the wreckage that was created by by Tia's death and by Jimmy's breakdown. And um, we're sort of starting to now uh, try to make sense of this like life in shambles. Absolutely. Now, uh, Brett Goldstein, he appears this season uh, in front of the camera. I don't want to talk about his character. I'm gonna leave this spoiler free. But what I do want to ask you is, was that the role that uh, you always envisioned him to play? I don't know that it was always what even Brett intended on playing when the role was being conceived, but once it was on paper and we knew what the arc of that character was gonna be, I didn't think there was another choice but for Brett to play that character. Um, I think to some extent, the character Brett plays is also a reflection of Jimmy. They are, they are reflecting off of each other. And it was important for me to have somebody who I care about and relate to and could empathize with to play to play that part. Now, uh, can you talk about the dynamic this season between Jimmy and Paul, especially moving from more of a competitive relationship to more of a team based relationship, uh, especially dealing with Sean? Yeah, I think that they will always be a bit of an odd couple, um, Jimmy and Paul, which is what I love about them. Um, and Paul could probably stand to be a little more Jimmy and Jimmy could probably stand to be a little more Paul. And that's that's the beauty of a odd couple, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Now, uh, I love Jimmy and Gabby's relationship, but it takes an unexpected turn this season. Can you talk about uh, how Jimmy and uh, Gabby kind of have to navigate the emotional intricacies of their relationship? Yeah, I think it's kind of the reality of a friends with benefits kind of situation is it always starts out with the best of intentions, but someone ends up kind of quietly suffering and, and that comes to a head, you know? Absolutely. Uh, look, Jimmy's wedding speech was a pivotal moment for both Brian and Jimmy. How does uh, Jimmy's journey of repairing his friendship with Brian evolve throughout the season? Well, I once heard David Foster Wallace say this thing that, or he wrote this thing, um, that depression is such an overwhelming emotion that it makes it impossible to really empathize with other people's lives, see outside of themselves. And I think that Jimmy is finally out of that zone and into a place where he's able to really see what his friends were dealing with and engage with them and focus more on their problems than just his own. Absolutely. Well, look, Jason, thank you so much for your time. I love this show. It is oh. absolutely incredible. I cannot wait for everyone to see it. October 16th, baby. Thanks, Incred man. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. I appreciate your time, man. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you too. Dad? Who is this weird guy? That's my patient, darling. Who doesn't really want to be here because his issues stem from high school. Everyone's issues stem from high school, Dan.